here's what I want to show you now. Um, so yesterday, as I wandered around and watched you and your pair programming partner work on the sentence reverser, um, I saw various techniques um, to help you come up with that algorithm. Um, so I saw good examples of talking through the code together, tracing through the code, adding additional system.out.println's to get some insight into what the values of certain variables are. And all of those are effective ways to debug your program and figure out how to fix your algorithm. Um, but I'm going to show you a much, much more efficient and powerful way to debug your programs in VS Code. Um, and that's using the VS Code debugger. Um, and so we used the debugger in BlueJay. And the debugger in BlueJay is good, and it's helpful, and it's much more efficient than doing system out print lines. Um, but the debugger in VS Code is a professional tool. It is a professional level debugger, and it has a lot of features um, that BlueJay didn't have. So I want to show you those today, demonstrate those for you today, and then I will remind you incessantly um, for the rest of the year to actually take advantage of this tool. Um, so let's say something's not working in my sentence reverser. Obviously, I'm like, all I'm doing is pushing words on and popping them off. So like, it's definitely not going to work. But that's okay. I needed some code for, for demonstration purposes. Um, let me turn these off for now. So first things first is the way you set a breakpoint in VS Code is similar to the way you set it in BlueJay. Um, and the way you set a breakpoint is if you hover your cursor over this left column to the left of the line numbers, you'll see these little red dots. Those little red dots, if you click, becomes a breakpoint. So for example, I can click here on line, my line 22, and I get a breakpoint at line 22. Now to actually debug the code, you run it slightly differently. I do want to be clear about that. So if I switch over to the reverser tester class, you'll notice the links here are for run and debug. You have to click on debug to use the debugger. Um, when I say it that way, it seems obvious, but a lot of times I click run just because I'm that's like my normal habit. And I'm like, why didn't it stop at my breakpoint? Because it only looks at breakpoints if you click debug. So now if I click debug here, it will run. I'm going to move this a little down out of the way. Um, and you'll notice my program started running. And there's this new pop-up toolbar here, which is the debugging toolbar. And you can drag it around. Um, each of these buttons are slightly different, but similar to the icons that were in BlueJay. Um, so this play icon is to continue your code. It just keeps running until it hits another breakpoint. This steps over the highlighted line, the line highlighted in yellow. This will step into any method calls in the highlighted line. If you're inside of a method, um, like we're inside of the reverse method, this button will step out of that method and go back to the code that called it. Um, this program restarts your whole, reruns the whole program. So you might actually make some edits to your code and then need to rerun it. And this is a quick way to say rerun it. And this is a quick way to terminate it. Um, we're not going to worry. This doesn't work with Java, I don't think. We'll talk about that later in the semester when we get to JavaScript stuff. Um, so anyway, so this, this is the toolbar. You can move it around. It's all cool. Um, another really neat feature of VS Code, and, and I'm not sure of the official name of this. I think of it as kind of like annotations. I don't know if that's right. But you'll see these highlighted words beside my code. See here where it says sentence equals Mary had a little lamb, blah, blah, blah. Scanner equals scanner at nine. That's just a reference. Um, here's words. It's a stack, but it also tells me the current size of my stack. These are like annotations. So as I step through the code, I can just look, keep my eyes focused on the code and get the information I probably most likely need or want. Um, when we started debugging, in our left toolbar here, we switch from the explorer to the run and debug section. So this pane is now all different. Here's my variables. It'll show me all my local variables. Oh, I hate to do this to you all. Okay, hold on one second.
All right, so in this left, these are all of our local variables. Um, we would also have static variables there. We would have instance variables there. If you see this little eye icon, you can click on it and it will expand it. So here's my scanner object. Here's all the instance variables of that scanner object. So that can be really helpful when you're trying to debug like your own classes more so than like built in Java classes. Um, watch is something new. So very often there's something we're interested in um, and we don't want to have to keep like spinning things open to see it. Um, we just want to always know what the value is. So here we're dealing with this stack with the variable words. Maybe I always want to know how many elements are in my stack. So I can hover here in the watch pane and click on the plus icon and I can type a line of Java. Um, I can say like words.size, a Java expression, and hit enter, and it will constantly evaluate that for me, which is super nice. So as I step through some code here, and I start pushing things onto the stack, you'll see how it highlighted it to show me, hey, size just changed from zero to one. As I keep going, I push another element, size now changed to two but I don't have to like spin open words and scroll through and see the, all that stuff. I guess size is displayed here, but it's, it's easier, right? So the watch window is super cool and super useful. All right, here's something. Think about in BlueGen, you're debugging. Your program works fine until it gets to like the 10th time in the loop or maybe the 100th time in the loop. And you are so sick of going next, 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 next. And you're doing it really fast and you're trying to count. And then you miss the crucial moment that you wanted to stop and inspect with. Um, VS Code can help us with this. So I'm going to set a breakpoint here on line 24. And if I scroll down here, here, I'll get rid of this. If I scroll down here, there's another section called breakpoints. And if I look at that, ah, scroll. Here is the breakpoint I just sent, sentence reverser line, whatever, 24. There's a little like edit icon, a little pencil icon. It says edit condition. If I click on this, I can set a condition for a breakpoint. Conditional breakpoints are like a pro level feature. Um, BlueJay did not have them. There's several types of conditional breakpoints I can set. For the example I was just talking about, maybe I want to pause or break when I've hit this line of code for like the fifth time, right? So I can say when the hit count is five and then you have to hit enter for that to work. Um, now the icon has changed slightly. It's probably hard for you to see. It's got a little, it's not a red circle. It's got something else inside, like little equal sign or something. Um, now if I hit run, so right now our stack size is two. If I hit continue, now that we've, hit the breakpoint again. Did it go yet? Uh, I don't work. Let me hit go again. No. What did I do wrong? Edit. Hit count is five. Remove. Let me set a new one here. Maybe I just messed it up. Hit count six times, go. All right, let's see if this works better. It is not working. Restart. There we go, okay. Um, maybe you can't change the condition while the program's running, not sure. I don't know what I ran into there. I'll be honest, I'll look into that more. Um, but I just restarted the program and the first time it hit this breakpoint on line 25 was the sixth time that this line of code was executed. This can save you a tremendous amount of time when debugging, okay? Um, so if I know like it's the six word that's a problem, that's something I can, I can focus on. Um, here's another type of breakpoint. So let me set a breakpoint down here. Um, let's say like here we're just popping everything off of our stack. I, based on the output, I know something goes wrong when I've got like three elements left in my stack. I can scroll down here to breakpoints and I can edit this next one and I can now do an expression. I can even write something like words.size equals three. 
So now when there's only three elements left in the stack and only then will I hit a break point here. So I'm gonna restart again. We'll hit this first break point. I keep running. At this point, um, this while loop has run several times. There are only three elements left in my stack. Um, and so now I can like drill in, step through the code and be very efficient with my debugging process. Um, the last one I wanna show you um, is kind of cool too. So for this last one, um, this is, you know, I saw this a ton yesterday, which is fine, which is like, oh, let's add a system out print line so we can see each word that is like popped out. Um, you don't have to add code to do that. You can do, you can log a message. Um, and so I'm trying to remember the format for this. I can do something like word and then I can do words.peak, I think. Um, let's see if this works. Enter, restart, go. Uh, I don't know if it went. Oh, I saw the condition too. Expression, get rid of the expression. Condition, let's try it one more time. All right, I gotta work on that one, my formatting. Um, but you can add logging there as well. Um, so I, I know it's hard to make change um, or it's hard to change. And I know you are extremely comfortable adding system out print lines and running your code over and over again. Please take advantage of these like pro debugging features in VS Code. It will save you an inordinate amount of time. Um, but it's gonna take some practice. At first it's gonna be awkward. At first it's not gonna work quite right. Um, but this is like an essential skill to develop to be an effective and productive like software engineer. So any questions about the debugger at this point? Okay, thanks to your all help, I figured out what I was doing wrong with this uh, conditional breakpoint that's logging the message word followed by the word at the top of the stack. Um, I had the terminal panel displayed down here at the bottom to see the output from the program, um, but these log messages are going to be in the debug console. So if I click here, I can see um, all the words um, as they are being popped off the stack logged to the debug console. Um, and so that's where you can uh, interact with the debugger in that way, um, including evaluating expressions down here as well um, when you're paused in your program. So thanks for showing me what I did wrong, and I hope that helps.